Hi, Renee. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Awesome. Well, I want to quickly give everyone a background who's watching this video because you're a YouTuber and yes. my cousin sent me one of your videos and she was like, look, Stephanie, this is so cool. <laughs> And I adored this video. It was uh, teaching you some Southern slang. Yes, of course. And I just got such a kick out of that video. I actually rewatched it yesterday and I'm like, this video <laughs> is so good. Um, and I learned so much because you're, where are you from? Kentucky, Western Kentucky. Wow. Western Kentucky. And you guys use words over there and phrases and expressions that I have never heard in my life. And I learned through your video. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I have so many more too. <laughs> oh my goodness. So basically when my cousin um, sent me this video, I immediately thought, oh my gosh, one day I would love to interview her on my channel, have a conversation because first of all, my subscribers, they're always asking for conversations with real native English speakers, like other native English speakers. They want to hear how we yes. speak in real life. Yes. And, um, you know, a lot of my students say, I want to learn American English. And one of the things I tell them is, okay, but choose a mentor and learn from, you know, one person if you're trying to sound a specific way, because the reality is we all sound kind of different. Yes, we do. Yes. And people will hear <laughs> that as we're talking, because you have a very strong accent or what I consider strong, but probably when you're listening to me, you might think I have a strong accent too. I don't, I don't hear an accent in you, but I have a very strong Southern accent born and raised in Kentucky. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we have a really fun uh, conversation coming up. I've got a lot of questions for you. We're going to talk yeah. about slang. I'm going to test you on some Californian <laughs> slang and we'll oh, just okay. roll with it. <laughs> yeah, this will be fun. Yes. Cool. So um, really quick, your name is Renee. You're from Kentucky. And what can you tell us about yourself? So I'm going to be 52 this year. I'm born and raised in Kentucky. I'm a very Southern girl. Um, in the South, we will call each other redneck. I'm sure you've heard that term. It's just a, a slang term for in the South, specifically Kentucky, Tennessee. We live in the country. Um, I don't live in a big city and we're truly redneck. <laughs> so when people use this term over there, are they using it in an insulting way? Because I've, I've used it just for fun in a joking way, but I'm also careful because I'm like, what? Well, I, I wouldn't want to offend anybody by using sure. it. Do they find it offensive? It depends on how you use it, I guess. Redneck can be derogatory if somebody is doing something really stupid. Mm -hmm. They didn't educate themselves. They're doing things wrong. And you say, well, you're doing it the redneck way. Like that would be <laughs> derogatory. But we refer to each other as redneck because we're out in the country. We drive truck. You know, we're, we're outside all the time. I'm always barefoot. <laughs> so uh -huh. that is more, you know, the slang, the Southern, that that is... Um, a redneck reference if you live in the South yeah. or in this part of the country. And I just realized this, the people listening might not know why it's called redneck. Now, do you know that? Do you know why? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So I heard, I don't know if this is right, but it's because when you're working out in the fields, in the country, you get sunburned on your neck and you get a red neck. That would absolutely make sense because guys who work outside, construction workers, my husband is always outside when he takes off his t-shirt this is white and your neck is red. Yes. yes. So that, that <laughs> absolutely makes sense. <laughs> and because, because we, you know, there's a lot of white people in the U S we get really yes. red if we spend too much time in the sun. You are right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So really quick, how would you describe your Southern accent? My Southern accent is not as strong as it could be. Mm -hmm. I will talk to other Southerners and I really hear their Southern draw. I'm middle ground Southern accent, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what, when you hear me, you said you don't really hear an accent. First of all, no, why no. do you think that is? Because we do sound different. We do speak differently a little. We do speak very yeah. differently. Oh, I can tell Northerners have an accent. Southerners, very South, like Louisiana, they have their own accent. I can hear the, the, the Midwest. But once you get out to California and like Washington state, I don't really hear an accent in those folks. So that's you, right? Aren't you in mm -hmm. California? Yeah. 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 I don't hear, I don't hear an accent at all. 
So my take on this, why I think this happens is it has to do with exposure. The more you've been exposed to something, the more normal it sounds because the more familiar you are with it. It's like my mom has an accent um, because right. she's not a native English speaker. But growing up, people would say, oh, I hear your mom's accent. And I'd be like, what accent? Like to me, she sounded totally normal because I was so exposed to her. It like I couldn't hear an accent at all. So I think that's what happens because I know I do have an accent, but when we think about Hollywood and all of the films and TV shows that come out of Hollywood, and if everybody's sounding like me, then everybody's used to that. So it's kind of like standard in a way. Right. And then if someone has an accent that's outside of that, suddenly it's an accent because it sounds different. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you don't hear many Southern accents in Hollywood or in no. a movie. No, not at all. No. So anytime I'm out or traveling and I talk to people, they always have a reaction to my accent. But definitely when I'm, in, I'm at home in Kentucky, I will just typically encounter people have very stronger Southern draw than I do. So I uh -huh. never call myself middle ground for sure. Yeah, got it. And quick question. Do you ever change your accent depending on what you're doing and who you're with? Like, can you turn it on or off or make it stronger or less strong, depending on the situation you're in, who you're talking to? I never thought about that before, but yes, I think I can. I don't think I do it intentionally, but um, if I am in, like we go to Chicago or New York City, and I can tell that by people's reaction to me, <laughs> by uh -huh. my accent, they're like, whoa, I can definitely dial it down if I need to. But with, um, when I'm home, when I'm with my family and my friends and we all get, you know, yapping and talking, definitely the Southern draw comes out. So um, in a business setting, because I worked in a corporate world for 23 years, definitely if I was talking to people that were not from here, I could pronounce my words more clearly and not use some of the slang terms. And yeah, so I can turn mm -hmm. it off and on. Just not, I don't do that all the time. Yeah. Well, I actually think this is something a lot of people do without realizing it. I know I do it too. Even though I have, you know, my accent, if I'm around a bunch of people that speak like you, I tend to start saying y'all more, you know, yeah. and just like those things that I hear everybody else doing around me. And I think, I don't remember what this is called, but basically it comes from like the human need to be part of a group, right. Yeah. And to not totally stand out. And my husband does this. He's a native Spanish speaker. When he's with a bunch of Mexicans, start, suddenly his his accent starts changing. And I'm <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, but it's, you know, I think it's normal, actually. My oldest daughter lives in Milwaukee. And she always tells me that when she comes home, she doesn't really hear my accent, just, you know, talking to me on the phone. But when she comes home and she's with the family and we're all talking, her accent starts to come back out. And then when she goes back to Milwaukee, she loses a little bit. So even this morning... I said something and she's like, mom, that was so country. Ooh, <laughs> she's funny. like, I guess I, you know, it's yeah. So for those who don't know, where is Milwaukee? It's in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And do you think they have a different accent over there or is it more like mine or what do you think? Milwaukee is about an hour north of Chicago. So they mm -hmm. would speak very similar to folks that live in Chicago. So big city accent, not necessarily mm -hmm. a draw, just not Southern at all. Yeah. I have a feeling some people are watching this going, what? Like people have different accents in the U.S. Because, oh gosh, yes. Yeah. And, but when people yes. are learning a language and they think American English, they think it's just one kind, but it's not. Yeah. And we'll actually get into that later because we're going to compare our accents. I have a little exercise we're going to do for that. Yes. Um, but okay. So let's teach everyone some Southern slang. So the first one, we already yes. talked a little bit about it. It's y'all. What is this? Y'all is short for you all. Some people will say, you guys, hey, you, we take you all and we make it one word, y'all. Mm -hmm. We just draw it out that way. So we, I can say y'all for any reference yeah. talking to, you know, my husband, y'all doesn't have to be a lot of people. It can be one person. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, you know, oh, really? You just, oh, yeah. Y'all come on over. Come on in. How are y'all? Hey, y'all. It, it, you just, it is how you address any one or any group of people. So do you ever address your husband as y'all? That's not a name I give him, but I, well, it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> but like, do you use y'all just really just talking to one person once in a while? Sometimes I can be like, what are y'all doing? Oh. But really I'm talking to him. That's, you know what I mean? Oh, that is, okay. I haven't heard that before. That is interesting. I know that I do use y'all not on a regular basis, 
but I think I tend to use it when it's like, I don't want to say when like an attitude is kicking in or something, but I remember one time it was like one in the morning and my husband and my nephew, they were playing video games or something. And suddenly I was just like, y'all need to go to bed. It is late. And I, I was like, where did that come from? I don't know, but I do use it, but not like I have to get to a level to use it, if that makes sense. Whereas for you, it's probably just normal. It is in every, every day, every sentence thing. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. Okay. This next one, I loved Johnny Up. Never heard it in my life. Johnny Up is to be spontaneous. You didn't plan. You didn't make preparations. You just up and do something. So let's just say my husband will be in the living room at night. He will just out of the clear blue say, let's go get ice cream. So we'll just Johnny up and get ice cream. But like, it's just, we just, you just do it. There's absolutely no planning. You just Johnny up and do something. And probably no idea how this term started, right? I have no idea. That is so funny. I don't know. I like, I've literally, I've heard a lot of Southern slang, but this one I was like, and is this something just in your family or does like everybody know it there where you live and use it? I think most people around here have heard that one. Yeah. Okay. It's not a family thing. Now we do have some family slang terms. Um, some terms I use on my YouTube channel, which is funny because I have one terminology that I use all the time that my subscribers from all over the world now say it. And I actually printed shirts with it on there one time a couple share, years ago. It share so it with us. <laughs> so there's a story behind it. If you're taking a nap, like you can see my dog behind me on the couch. Well, can you? Yeah, this he looked like a pillow, but I see it now. <laughs> this is Maxie. Yeah. He is taking a Judy, J-U-D-Y, taking a Judy. And years ago, my mother-in-law fell asleep in church and my sister-in-law was with her. her and my mother's name is Judy. My sister-in-law took a photo of her and this was on Christmas Eve. And she sent it out to all of the family because we we're getting ready to get together. She sent us the photo of Judy sleeping in church. And somehow or another, it just became take a Judy mm-hmm. and it's caught on. So everybody now refers to taking a nap as taking a Judy. Well, that is a really great <laughs> example of how slang starts and how these yeah. terminologies come about. Because if another, if enough people start saying this, who knows, in 10 years, maybe people around the world are going to be talking about taking a Judy and it yes. will be something you have started. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> that is so cool. Okay. And then the next one, again, I love, I want to start using this. This one is dragon booty. What is dragon dragon booty? booty? (laughs) You're tired. You're exhausted. You have no energy. You are dragging your behind dragon Uh booty. Like if Uh you just, you know, worked super hard and you're tired or dragon booty doesn't necessarily have to be a physical tiredness. It can be, you know, you put a lot of effort into a project and you're at the end and you're just dragging booty to get to the end. Mm-hmm. So it can be mentally, it can be physically, but you're just dragging your behind. You're worn out. You're tired. Does this also mean like you're going slow? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dragging booty. Mm-hmm. Dragging booty. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And then the last one, this is also another good one. Um, like the South, I'm convinced now has so much great slang that we need to get exposed oh, yeah. to here where we live because it would be so fun to use these uh, yes. phrases that we can't really use because nobody knows. But, you know, I think I'm going to start using it and I'll explain to my family what it means. There and you I go. bet you they'll start using it. Okay, the next one is having a coming apart. <laughs> having a coming apart. You just are upset. You don't understand. You just are all worked up about things. You've heard having a tissy. You've heard that. Yeah, so I've, heard, I've heard that. You're one. having a coming apart. You're just coming apart about something. Yeah. I mean, it can be anything. So yeah, yeah having a coming apart. Yeah, like a like an emotional <laughs> breakdown or a mental breakdown or something like that. Yeah. It, yeah, anything. Okay. Or, you know, you could be in the middle of doing something and it's not going right and you're just all worked up about it. That's having a coming apart. <laughs> it, it can be big. It can be small. It's just having a coming apart. That is so fun. Okay. Um, you can yes. write a book with slang terms. And maybe you should. (laughs) Yeah, because these are really fun. So now I want to test you on some Californian slang. And I kind of roll my eyes at this because I was like, do we even have Californian slang? I had to Google it because I was like, I I don't know what kind of slang do we have? And then I got these terms from like a list on Google, but I don't even know if it's 
crew, Californian slang, you might know it. You might, I'll be shocked if you don't know it. Let's just put okay. it that way. Okay. So do you know what it means to put someone on blast? Does it mean you're talking about them? Yes. Kind of. Okay. Yes. So when you put someone on blast, uh, it means to embarrass someone in public. So let's say, oh. um, you know, like Judy fell asleep in church and you guys put her on blast we by, <laughs> by sending that photo to the whole family. You put Judy on blast yes. and then this whole thing came came to be about taking a Judy. That's oh. putting someone on blast. So uh, have you heard I, this before? I've heard that, but apparently I didn't know what it meant. Yes. Okay. And so you probably don't really use it, right? No. Yeah, because if you don't know what something means, obviously it's really difficult to use it. That's something I teach in one of my vocabulary uh, or in my vocabulary course. So yes, I actually use this all the time. So I guess we can confirm that maybe this is Californian <laughs> slang. Apparently, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll be like, oh, he totally put me on blast. Like he shared that piece of information with, you know, everybody over there. And it's almost like throwing somebody under the bus too. Okay. You know, we that use, one's a common know one. that one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The next one is butt hurt. I've heard that. It means you, um, somebody hurt your feelings. Yeah. When someone gets upset over a small thing and maybe they're like pouting or they're upset about it, but you feel like they shouldn't be upset about that. Oh. Right. So he's over in the corner all but hurt because I, I don't know. Or you could say Judy's in the corner, but hurt because <laughs> I, I sent the picture and like, it's no big deal, but Judy's over there, <laughs> but hurt, you know? So oh, poor mother-in-law. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Judy. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, she would love it. She would love it. Oh man. So yeah. you, so you don't use butthurt then? Mm -mm, no. Okay. That's no. another one. I've been using that one for years. No. I see, I would I would probably say in that scenario, he's over there in the corner having a coming apart because blah blah blah. Yeah. And, you know, the yeah. other thing we could consider, too, is that slang sometimes is like generational. Like there might be things that people in Kentucky use that are my age that I also use or that you're using that younger people aren't using. Because I know that that's how words come into existence, too. Like, sure, there is so much new slang out there that I don't even use that I'm finding on the Internet. And I have to Google and I'm like, oh, my God. What does this mean? I ask my niece. She's 16. If I hear something, I'm like, I text her. What, is, what does so-and-so mean? And she uh -huh. laughs at me. But I'm like, I, how would I know that? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. One that I recently noticed was when people say like somebody died or something, they're saying they unalived themselves. And I'm just like, oh, that's a new one. And it's also longer. <laughs> it's longer yeah. than just saying they died. they died. Anyway, there's a lot. So yeah, another conversation for another time. But Yep. The last one is when something looks sketch or sketchy. Have you heard this? Yes, sketchy. We say that. It's okay. sketchy. All right. Yeah. So for those that don't know, it basically means something looks not safe or dangerous. Or like if you see a dark alleyway that mm, looks sketch or looks sketchy. Yeah. I think people used to say it looks sketchy and it has evolved to sketch. Because I don't remember people saying sketch as much in the past. What about you? We say sketchy. Yeah. Like That's what we I mean. use the why. Yeah. Just untrustworthy. Not, mm -hmm. not going to do that yet. Yeah, sketchy. Yes. A situation uh, or a thing or anything. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So now um, <laughs> let's move on. We're going to compare yeah. our pronunciation a little bit. When I was oh. watching your YouTube videos, I noticed your intonation patterns are sometimes slightly different from mine and your rhythm is sometimes slightly different from mine. Um, but the most obvious difference I would say is in the pronunciation of the I diphthong. So that's um, like a vowel that changes, right? Okay. I, it's not like a straight eh sound eh, that doesn't change. So I, you tend to pronounce this like ah, ah. ah. So for example, ah. the question why, how would you say that? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Wow. So our letter I's, we say them like your I, I. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. or well, no, that's not true. Yeah. It's like, not. yeah, like, <laughs> because I would say why. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. That exactly. takes a lot of effort. Why? <laughs> yes. Well, I understand because you're yeah. not used to it. And when I try to, you know, pronounce things in other ways, I'm like, wow, that's actually really hard because I'm not used to it. Um, yeah. But I have some words here. So, for example, I would say why, 
I, my, try. And what would you say? Wa, ma, a, tra. Yeah. So we can totally hear the difference there. It's a yeah. and I. And yeah. sometimes my I, it might not be as prominent like that. If I'm speaking quickly or something like that, I might reduce it a little bit. But for the most part, I make the full sound, the diphthong. And for you, it's just a straight ah. Ah. Mm-hmm. And uh, another word where I heard this earlier in our conversation was the word tired. I say tired. What do you say? Tired. 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 Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to point that out because that's one of the easiest um, pronunciation differences. And it's like, we're yeah. both from the same country. We both speak the same language, but there's this very big difference in our pronunciation. And that's one of the most obvious ones to spot. Yes, very much so. <laughs> and I'm so used to saying, you know, the full sound, the I or whatever. So it's not hard for me, but I can see why it would be difficult if you're not used to doing that. It feels like it just takes more effort. Sure. Oh, it does take more effort. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a sentence we can say that uses this sound a lot. Uh, so people can really hear the difference. And the question or the sentence is, why did I even try? Why did I even try? How would you say this? Why did I even try? Yeah. Why did, why I, did I even try? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> All right. And then there's one more difference that's pretty obvious to spot. And it happens with ING words. These are words like something, going, saving. Sometimes I take off the G. Um, mm -hmm. But not always. But I noticed that in your accent, you tend to drop the G a lot more. Yeah. So I would say maybe something. And how would you say that? Something is probably a word that I do say the G, but like mm -hmm. driving, I say driving, mm -hmm. trying. I don't say something. I'm a something. I don't know. That's weird for that word. But yeah, mm -hmm. driving, trying, cooking, yeah. eating. But eating, I do say the G. So it, I guess it just depends on the word. I'm not sure. Yeah. And it could also depend on the context because it depends, like basically something a lot of English speakers don't realize is how our pronunciation changes depending on the stress of the sentence, the context, what words we're emphasizing when we speak. So sometimes I say something and sometimes I say something. Yeah. Something's yeah. weird. Something's weird about this. Something's weird. Yeah. And then I can say going or I can say going. Like, yeah, they're just going around, talking, going around, yeah. talking rather than going around talking. So right. I do it too. But I, I guess my point is I noticed you tend to do it more regularly in your accent. Like that's a feature of your accent to drop the G more frequently than I would. Yes, I probably drop it 90% of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm so, going to the grocery, not yeah. going to the grocery. Yeah. And um, in one of your videos that I watched, the 25 Things About Me video, I noticed a really good example sentence from this. You said, I love saving my money, right? That's right. I Say, love saving my money. Yeah, saving, saving, saving. Mm -hmm. saving. By the way, this is something that a lot of um, English students struggle with because when they're learning English in their classrooms, maybe they're learning like the most formal, the most complete yeah. way of pronouncing words. And then they actually go travel to the U S or they watch movies and they're like, that's not actually how people talk. And no, they're mortified. <laughs> yeah. They're mortified because they don't understand and they're frustrated. So that's yeah. also kind of why I'm focusing in on these differences. Sure. Yeah. We are in the South. We have a draw. It's like a lazy draw. So we will draw things out and like you said, drop off letters and shorten things up to come up with slang. That's just our nature, I guess. Yeah. Well, actually, I like that you say that because when I was comparing the sentence and the way you said it in your video, you said, I love saving my money. I noticed also that you lengthened the word love because mm -hmm. I wouldn't say with my accent, like, I love saving my money or I no, love... You it, it just sounds weird, right? I would just yeah. say, I love saving money. I love, so it's shorter, but that's probably where the draw comes from, right? You're drawing out the word. I love, it's longer. You draw out the verb. I love saving my mm -hmm. money or I love cooking or I mm -hmm. adore so-and-so like mm -hmm. the, yes. Uh-huh. 
a lot. I do that a lot. Yeah. Now that you point it out. Yeah. Yeah. And for those watching who study English, this has to do with the rhythm of the sentences. The length of the words creates the rhythm. And in English, yes. we have different types of words that are different lengths. And like some are shorter, some are longer, but also depending on where they're at in the sentence and how the speaker emphasizes the words or the accent, it can make the words longer or shorter, like in this example. Really interesting, I guess, for me at least, uh, features of <laughs> English and how people use it differently, again, in the same country. Like we're from the same place. But we're, yep. but we're not. You're from a different state and yeah. I'm from a different place. And anyways, there's differences. Okay, so I have some true or false, I guess, questions for you okay. or statements. They're statements. And I want to know if they're true or false. It's like stereotypes of the South that I have heard. So first of all, everyone from the South has a Southern accent. True or false. And we can also say everyone from the South has the same Southern accent. True or false. Depends on what you define the South. So the South technically is any, if you fall below the Mason Dixon line, so Kentucky, Tennessee, Florida is in the South, but they don't necessarily have the Southern accent. Mm -hmm. So to me, the Southern accent is Kentucky, Tennessee, Texas can get Southern E, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, little bit of the South Carolina, but, but it kind of stops there as far as the Southern draw. Yeah. So does everyone in the South, everyone have a Southern accent? If you're born here and you grew up hearing this accent, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Next, Southerners are really friendly and open with strangers. That is so true. Absolutely true. Yeah. Yes. I, I read that Southern hospitality is a real thing. Like people just it, are different there. It. Yes. So when I leave the South and go to other countries and other places in the United States, I'm like, wow, the Southern hospitality is not here. We speak to each other. If I am walking down the street and I see someone, a total stranger, you say hello when you pass them. Mm -hmm. So um, you hold the door for other people. You speak in the grocery. I mean, it's just it's just what we do. Yes, yeah, very much it, so. It almost seems like living life in a bit of a slower pace, like taking the time to say hello, taking the time yes. to talk. Yes, very true. And on that note, is it normal for people to use the word ma'am like yes ma'am yes sir in the south is that something yeah, that is southern with the it's yes ma'am oh no, sir. I, yes ma'am i didn't oh, know yeah. that like i guess for the most part we teach our children to say ma'am and sir mm -hmm. so even I, i'm 52 years old when i refer to a woman or i'm speaking to a woman i'll say yes ma'am like it's just it's just what mm -hmm. you do i would never say yes and stop there. It's yes, ma'am. Like it's or, a form of respect. Yes. Or thank you, ma'am. Or, you know, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. it's just part of the, the, the way that you acknowledge the person you're speaking to. Yeah. And that is different because over here, I don't hear ma'am nearly as much or sir. Maybe if you're in the grocery store, somebody might say it, especially if they don't know your name, like, oh, ma'am, did you, um, oh. I don't swipe your card again, please, or whatever. Um, but it, I don't hear it as much. And um, I actually have a YouTube video, one of my very first when I was first figuring out like how to teach online and what I wanted to teach about and teaching English, where I talked about mistakes people made in English. And I corrected something that I don't think anymore is a mistake. But basically in the comments of my YouTube videos, I was getting a lot of comments where people were addressing me as ma'am. And it made me feel uncomfortable because where I'm from, oh. we, we don't do that. Plus I was younger then. And I felt like ma'am is something you use for somebody who's older. So I was like, don't call me ma'am. Like don't <laughs> use ma'am. And now I realize it's not wrong per se. It's just a variation of normal. Yes. Yeah, so I will say ma'am. So I, I used to own an ice cream shop. I recently sold it. And when customers would come in, I could refer to a seven-year-old girl as ma'am. Mm -hmm. If she handed me her money for ice cream, I would hand her her change and say, thank you, ma'am. Like, that's just, you refer to each other that way. It has really nothing to do. I mean, I guess formally, children would refer to adults as ma'am. But mm -hmm. we refer to each other. It's like saying your name. Instead of me saying your name, I would say ma'am at yeah. the end of my sentence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it's also a way to close out your conversation. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See you, ma'am. Yes, yeah. sir. Like, you know, yeah. it, 
doesn't really come up in the middle of conversation so much. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to bring something up uh, and then I'll continue with my list. But uh, <laughs> talking about how we can use ma'am in the South for older people or younger people or anywhere. When you, uh, when I first contacted you and I was like, oh, I really want to interview you, et cetera. And you replied and we were sending voice messages. And one of the things you said was, yes, I am a Southern. What did you say? A Southern, southern girl gal. with a, yeah, Southern gal with a Southern accent or something. Yes. But I think you used the word girl. Cause I wrote it down. I was like, oh, that's so interesting because usually people would think of a girl as a child. Right. But I, I realized I'm like, this is a very endearing way to speak about yourself. You know, yes. a, I'm a Southern girl, right? Yes. So I will refer to younger gals or like myself as girl. But if I'm going to talk about other women, I typically will say gal. I don't say, look at those group of women over there. I would say, look at those gals over there. Mm -hmm. That's just a more kind and welcoming way to say it versus look at those women. I would yeah. say, look at those gals. You know, it just has a different... A different effect. Yeah. yeah different girl, feel. gal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that in there. <laughs> um, and then, okay. Um, next, I one time heard that when in the South, they say, oh, bless her heart or bless your heart. It's like a nice way of saying F you. Is that true? Or what do you have to say about that? Depends on the tone and the context that it's being used. So my mother will say, bless your heart meaning you're so sweet. Mm -hmm. It's another way to say, I love you, or you've done something good. Bless your heart. Um, it can be a put down if somebody is doing something really stupid and you go, well, bless your heart. <laughs> oh it's my God. Really wow. Tone. I actually felt that it was like you idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it can go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a big takeaway from this entire conversation is like, that's how language is. Like, it's not yes. always literal. There's so many times where the tone behind what you say or the attitude behind what you say will literally make what you say positive or negative. Absolutely. <laughs> Bless your heart is one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So finally, we're going to wrap up uh, with some recommendations. So yeah. Best Southern food everyone should try. Do you have anything you recommend? Oh, my goodness. There are so many Southern things. The first thing that comes to my mind is fried squash. Have you ever had fried squash? I don't know if I have. <laughs> okay, so how? what is this and how do you make it? So yellow squash. Mm -hmm. You slice it up pretty thin. You put it in buttermilk and then you flour it in a mixture that's 50% cornmeal and 50% flour with salt and pepper. And then you put a little bit of oil in a cast iron skillet mm -hmm. and you, you brown it until it's golden brown and crispy. And when I do fried squash, the squash has to be fresh out of the garden. That's the only time I do it. I don't do like grocery store squash and my family will stand there and eat the squash. As soon as I get it out of the skillet, <laughs> it won't even make it to dinner. It's just, we, we consume the squash. It is wow. so good. Yes. So is it true that in the South people eat a lot of fried food or love fried food? Because that's kind of another stereotype I've heard. We eat a lot of fried food. Fried catfish is very popular in Kentucky where I live. I love fried catfish. <laughs> wow. I've never tried that. <gasps> it's a white flaky fish. It is so good if it's fried and it's crispy. Oh, yeah. Mm, nice. Fried catfish. We will fry green tomatoes. You've heard fried green tomatoes. I Yes, I've heard this, but I have not tried it yeah um fried okra again fried, not yeah, haven't tried chicken. it yeah all fried the things chicken. but fried squash is a, is really is a southern thing and that's something i love and then barbecue well of course barbecue is more where i'm from kentucky um and western kentucky we are known for our barbecue and so that's you know something we do what with. is what is something that makes your barbecue i would say different from because i feel like in the u.s there's barbecue like places everywhere. So is there something that makes the barbecue you guys do a little bit different? You can go to places in the South where they will take their barbecue and just put it in a sauce. So it's a saucy, you know, whatever. You can have dry barbecue that was done with a rub. Mm -hmm. Where I live, it's dry barbecue with a little bit of sauce on top. Like if you're going to have a barbecue sandwich or a plate of barbecue, you have slaw and fries and corn. Mm -hmm. And then you put your barbecue on top. It's not dripping in barbecue sauce. 
Nice. And is it smoked also, or is it just done on fire? Well, it's both. Oh. You can do it either way. So my husband loves to grill. He loves to barbecue. He smokes ribs. You can do brisket and pork butt. A lot of people do it a lot of ways, but typically it is smoked or you can put it on the grill at the end to char the outside. He'll probably nice. get mad at me because I'm saying that wrong, but <laughs> it's mainly smoked. So when you have barbecue and you start pulling the meat, the very top of it, underneath that dry section, you'll see red. And then the meat gets a lighter color. That's your smoke ring on the outside. Oh, wow. And that, means, that is what tastes so good, that smoke ring. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I've seen the smoke ring. I just never yes. knew what created it or how to make it your or smoker. any of that. Yeah, cool. That's your smoker. Oh, yeah. Fourth of July, Labor Day, Memorial Weekend, we will smoke ribs and smoke chicken. Nice. Yes. We got a little smoker and my husband does smoke things once in a while, but not often. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we did smoked. We did smoked salmon once. That was pretty good. Have you guys done that? Well, so we do, we're getting off topic. We do salmon <laughs> on a cedar plank and put it on the grill. We don't Ooh, smoke it. That's yeah. the kind of salmon. Like I used to like ordering in restaurants. I mean, I still yeah. do, but I just haven't in a long time. Cause it's yeah. so good. I didn't know I could just make it myself. That's yes, you cool. can. You can just buy the cedar planks. Absolutely. Very. We'll have to talk about that later. Yes. <laughs> I, I have a feeling I'm going to need to get some recipes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Next one. What is sweet tea and do you like it? What is sweet tea? So traditional Southern sweet tea, you take tea bags and you put them in water and you set it outside in the sun. So it is sun brewed and it is sweetened with real sugar. No artificial sweeteners, none of that. It is real sugar and it is sweet, sweet, sweet. Like when you pour it, it is like sappy. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, sweet tea is sweet. I love iced tea. I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of sweet tea. It can just be overwhelming and so sweet and has, a. Oh, there's a lot of sugar in there. So I used to drink sweet tea, but about 10 years ago, I decided, you know what? I need to get away from all that. And now I drink unsweet tea. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, sure. Either way, <laughs> I don't it's, drink sugar and I try not to put sugar in my drinks. If it comes yeah. with it, it comes with it. But um, I've tried sweet tea like in fast food places growing up and I never really liked it because, well, one, it was probably artificial, not real. And two, right. it was really sweet. But I've been curious because in movies in the South and stuff, I always hear about the sweet tea and the, everybody's talking about the sweet tea and maybe even in country music, they might talk about the sweet tea. And I'm like, OK, there's something with this sweet tea. I need to ask about this. It is real sugar. So funny that you bring this up because where I live in Kentucky, last week we have the quilt show here. My city I, that I live in is called Quilt City USA. That's our, mm -hmm. our nickname. We have the largest quilt show and convention in the world held here. Wow. So I went downtown to the quilt show and walked around the streets and did a YouTube video about it but they had food vendors out for all the people who were at the convention center and several of them, I would say 40% of them had signs out front saying that they served sweet tea to wow. all the quilters. Yeah. Wow. And for yeah. the people that don't know what quilts are. Oh, quilts. Um, their blanket is probably not the right term, but I don't know any better way to describe yeah, it. I They're, would say like a blanket or a handmade comforter or something like that. Yes. Hand stitched, very intricate, can take, I mean, forever to make a beautiful quilt, but they're all done by hand and it's, they're beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Quilts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you said a quilt convention, I was like, wow, that sounds very American and very country. <laughs> and it is right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Next. What is a really cool or interesting place to visit? Like for people that already either live there or where you're at or in the South or for people that are thinking of traveling to the South or to where you live. If you come to Paducah, Kentucky, which is where <laughs> I live in late September every year, we have something called it's a festival called Barbecue on the River. It is a huge three-day barbecue festival. So in Paducah, Kentucky, we live right where the Ohio and the Tennessee Rivers meet. Mm -hmm. So downtown, which is on the river, we have a festival. It spans several blocks and there's like, I don't know, 40 or 50 different vendors there for a three or four day span that serve barbecue and ribs you have Cajun corn and ribbon fries and coleslaw and funnel cakes. 
and you know hot fudge cakes and cheesecake on a stick and it's incredible yeah it sounds like if you want to experience something american with a bunch of american food that sounds Barbecue like a great idea river. yes <laughs> and that's actually something that i really like that we do here in the us we do festivals around all kinds of things especially food related like um, growing up, I used to hear about some asparagus festival and I would think like Ooh. asparagus, but apparently people get together, they sell asparagus, they make things with asparagus and yeah. it's, I never went, I'd love to go, but I've heard of an asparagus festival, barbecue festivals. My brother, actually, this is hilarious. Um, he, they invited us. They're like, oh, we're going to go to this barbecue festival. I don't remember if it was in Fresno, California or whatever, but they traveled, they booked yeah. a hotel, they stayed overnight. I'm like, wow, you guys are some serious, like, you're serious about your barbecue ribs. Like you're really serious oh, about yeah. it to go to a festival and to then book a hotel. And like, it's an event, oh, yeah. you know, but it's really cool. It's fun. Yes. We go every year. I think I have this number correct, correct but I heard somewhere that our city said last year, 30,000 people went downtown to barbecue on the river. Wow. That sounds That's really fun. Yeah. It sounds <laughs> fun. Oh, it is. You can smell the fire and the smoke and the barbecue from about a mile and a half away from the festival. I bet. I bet. Oh, yes. That's it smells cool. so good. Yeah. So last question here um, about your recommendations. Is there a Southern tradition uh, that you really love? We get together as a family and by family, not just my daughters, but like my husband's family, his grandpa, like everybody, 40 of us get together for any family holiday. Mother's Day, Easter, Father's Day, birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, we get together for a huge family meal. So I think that, I don't know that that happens elsewhere. It's a very Southern thing um, to have huge family gatherings, but yeah, that's pretty Southern. That's a yeah. good tradition. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing all of this with us. This, I feel like this has been really, really no, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where can everyone find you online? Because I would love to just send everybody after this video, send them your way so that they can yes. listen and watch more of your videos and listen to more of your content and get familiar with how you speak. Yes. Uh, because it's, it's another way of speaking American English. And I think they're going to learn a lot and have a lot of fun with you. Absolutely. So I have a YouTube channel. It's called Welcome to My Curls. Curly hair. Everything in my life revolves around my curls. It's kind of defined who I am. And so it's called Welcome to My Curls. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram under that same name. I'm on Facebook. And I post new YouTube videos every Tuesday and Friday. Those videos are about where I live in the South. I go out and about. It's about my life and yeah. um, things I love. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think it's a really great um, resource for everybody here that's watching because it's lifestyle content. It's everyday yes. type stuff. It's, Hey, this is what I'm doing today. This is what I did yesterday. And, you know, just so if you're curious about American life and what it might be like to be here, I think Renee has some really awesome stuff for you. I think you should check it out, follow her. And you'll learn, you'll learn a lot about American life and culture just by following her. Yes. A lot about Southern food. I do a lot of cooking videos and I make Southern food. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you from the bottom of my heart, Renee. I think this was so <laughs> much fun and I am so glad we did it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Stephanie. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Have a good one. See you later.